Ready to go. Alrighty, ladies and gents, welcome to uh, an interesting show. A topic that I haven't actually discussed at any point in time in uh, previous videos. But um, as you, some of you guys know, in the last four days, I have started working with a nutritionist. And uh, as part of doing that, I got a full blood work done. Um, so I went to a doc and they took about eight vials of blood out of my arm and um, it was very interesting. I've never had full bloods done before. I've only ever had spot, spot sort of blood tests when I've been sick or something like that. Um, so to have full blood work done and um, testing everything from am I dying of uh, certain viruses all the way through to my testosterone levels um, was really, really interesting. And the purpose of all of this was so that the nutritionist can help peak me for Zloty. Um, he wanted to know everything that's going on. So straight away, I have to say, working with a nutritionist is cool. Uh, it's got me very excited because never in my life have I ever really given enough attention to my nutrition. And I've always wondered in the back of my mind, what would my performance be like if I did that? So it's taken the Zloty Tour in 2019 to be the catalyst to me finally pulling my finger out and doing that. I do have to say a big thank you to Lachlan Adair because it was it was him that actually started with the nutritionist um, a few months ago. And he was raving about the results and in terms of his performance and just his well-being and his percentage body fat, all that sort of stuff. One rep maxes have gone up and he's looking lean. So he put me under this guy, Jay. So if you want to know who I'm working with, uh, gentleman's name is Jay. You can message him at um, thestrengthcoach.com.au. So uh, I think it was info at thestrengthcoach.com.au, his email. But anyway, I'll put the correct one up if that is incorrect. But very, very interesting. Um, I'm only four or five days into working with a nutritionist and um, a lot of things have changed. And what we've got back from this full blood blood work is going to also dictate a lot of what happens as well. So I've got a uh, like a five page report here and I'm looking at the numbers and I don't think you guys want to hear about everything. It's not that clear to me anyway when I read it back. It was a lot easier when the doc sat there and explained it to me. But some of the key points that came out um, that were most notable to me and I'll save the interesting ones for last um, which is what I, I think my testosterone was probably the most interesting thing. But the first thing that uh, the doc said to me was I was super low on iron. Um, the, the iron scales uh, go from like 12 through to 25 uh, in terms of what would be considered the, the typical range. And um, he said, normally if you're as low as a 13, 14, 15, we would start to talk about supplementing iron and eating a whole lot more um, foods that are going to have iron in them. And he said that iron uh, definitely relates to your testosterone as well. Um, and for me, my iron was at 11. So I was actually off the charts low. Um, he asked me if I, if I get lightheaded or faint. And I do occasionally. Normally, it's only when I do a hard gym session. But... Um, I always thought that that was just something that was because I worked out hard. I didn't think it was because I had low iron or anything like that. So anyway, I have super low iron. Um, so straight away, that's the first thing that I will be fixing. Now, um, I'm not going to be going onto a supplement like an iron tablet or anything like that. I'm just going to start eating a whole lot more greens. I'm going to replace some white meats with red meats. And um, that's going to hopefully fix that. But anyway... In about um, probably two months time, I will do another blood test to see how everything has changed and adjusted since um, making these recommended uh, recommended changes. But anyway, iron was super, super low. My, my iron absorption factor was still good, um, interestingly. So I guess I'm just not eating enough iron. But anyway, my nutrition has always been really rubbish. I've always been someone who just eats anything whenever I feel like it. Uh, I didn't eat consistently. I would intermittent fast some days and then other days I would um, eat a lot. Like it was all over the place, but now I'm eating with consistency um, and it's interesting. Okay, so what else did we get? All right, so in addition to iron being um, something that was abnormal for me, uh, there was two viruses apparently that lie dormant 
um, within my my body, um, which was just an indicator that I've had these viruses in the past. One was um, the glandular fever virus, and the other was the chronic fatigue virus. I don't, I can't remember what the actual virus names were, but both of those viruses I've apparently had at some point in my life. I do remember when I was a kid playing tennis. I think that that was when I had glandular fever. Um, I have no idea when I picked up or got any sort of chronic fatigue virus. A lot of people. Oh, I got the eye herpes virus, but yeah, we well, you know. If you didn't know what that story is, that's a rock that hit me in the eye when I was a kid. Uh, it's not a virus, but anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, two dormant viruses. And what that essentially meant that was um, when I asked the doc, um, what does that mean? He actually said, well, you're pretty much screwed, uh, jokingly. But um, then he told me that basically it means that if my immune system is down at any one point in time, that I'm just more susceptible to fatigue and more susceptible to feeling lousy. So um, that's another one of the interesting points, but I'm not too concerned about that. Um, cholesterol, all that sort of stuff was normal. I was a little high on one of the bad fats, but um, as working with the nutritionist, one of the things that I'm doing is increasing significantly in my good fats and oils. So MCT oil is something that I'm taking daily, um, a super concentrated version of MCT oil um, to fix all of that. And then we got to the stuff that I was looking forward to most of all, my testosterone levels. And look, testosterone is a, is a big factor in our sport, obviously. Um, a lot of people, there's a lot of a lot of controversy, a lot of stigma around drug use and what is considered uh, performance enhancement and cheating and all that sort of stuff. We've got leagues that test, leagues that don't test, and plenty of people on very much legal um, testosterone replacement therapy. I mean, GPs here uh, prescribe it all the time. They do it in all around the world. But anyway, um, my test levels came back. What are they? What were they? My testosterone and my free testosterone were both uh, measured. Now, testosterone is reported between a scale of 10 to 25. Uh, I forget the units, but anyway, the score of 10 to 25 is considered the normal range for a male. Mine came back at 14. Uh, and my free testosterone, uh, which is measured on a scale of 100 to uh, 1100, came back at 370. So I was on the lowish and for sure, I was well below the midpoint. Um, I'm 34 years old. The one interesting thing was, um, I'll let you guys in on, on a secret, is I wanted to see, um, I wanted to do two tests in two different conditions. I wanted to do the test in the worst possible condition as a baseline and then a test in uh, the best possible condition as another comparison. So this one was in the worst possible condition. Now, what makes the worst possible condition? Um, basically, I got drunk the night before. I was home alone getting drunk. Uh, so acute <laughs> consumption of alcohol suppresses testosterone. So as bad as I could make my testosterone um, through being drunk, was that, but still, um, my understanding of how much suppression, uh, when I talk, talked with people about that is that you might get 10 or 15, maybe 20% suppression when you take an acute amount of alcohol. So that's still, if I add the 10 to 20%, um, I'm still low. I'm still low. Uh, which, which when I asked the doc, why did, why am I low? Um, he said probably because of your iron. Um, iron is something that normally correlates with testosterone. Given the amount of training that I'm doing, um, there's no reason for me to have low testosterone. Um, and my age is still reasonably young on the scale of where it's at. But anyway, so it wasn't low enough that the doc was going to be prescribing me um, TRT or anything like that. For me to be prescribed TRT, I would have needed to be below 10 um, or below 100 on the free testosterone. So I was still in the range of a normal person. Uh, I just wasn't, I guess, like a typical 18 or 20 year old who would be at the high end of the scale. And obviously the older you get, the lower it becomes as well. So anyway, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when I start eating spinach and start eating more red meats instead of white meats to change that factor. And, um, I got to admit, when I was preparing for this test, it was very interesting. I wanted to know uh, where my test was at. And if it had have been super low, and this is where the controversy comes into it with our sport and with so many people um, 
of course, we've got federations like the World Anti-Doping Authority um, and here in Australia, the Australian uh, Anti-Doping Authority um, that don't allow you to take synthetic testosterone, but society does. Um, so it's very interesting. Society is more than happy for people to be on testosterone replacement therapy. It's entirely legal and, and, and acceptable, um, but you're not meant to be on it if you're an Olympic athlete, for instance. Um, so anyway, it's an interesting one. Had my test levels have been low enough that they would have been prescribing it to me, I, I think personally I'd be in a headspace where I'd be happy to take it. Um, I'm not going to be competing in WAF anytime that I was, if I, if I was on that, I wouldn't compete in WAF. Um, I just pick and choose where I go. But anyway, I feel like I'm at the elite level of the sport now, regardless. Um, and it's going to be super interesting to see where it all goes from here. But anyway, first time I've had my full blood works done, I found it very fascinating. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again after I fix some stuff with the nutritionist and to see what has changed. Uh, and look, I would recommend everyone goes and does this. Um, first time in my life I've done it. Um, yeah, super, super fascinating stuff. Anyway, guys, I just thought I'd give you that one as an update, as something random in my content. Um, I'm seven weeks out from Zloty 2. My numbers are going through the roof with my one maxes. I'm feeling the best I've ever been. I've only been with a nutritionist for five days. I've dropped like a kilo and a half and energy's good. One max is going up. So happy days. Hopefully when the nutritionist reads this and goes through it and uh, then sets the plan for my nutrition leading up to Zlotty, it'll mean that I'm in my best shape ever. Much like Lachlan Adair is, you've got to go and see photos of him that I released on Pound for Pound today. The dude is looking like a freak. Anyway, hope you guys are well and thank you for watching. Yes, that's a bit!